so this fear of flying you tell me about is perfectly understandable. Airplanes, after all, are sort of an impossible thing. It's large and heavy and travels through the sky. And yet, it's been part of daily life for 100 years. So maybe improbable is a better word. There was a time when it was referred to as the miracle of flight. But as time has progressed and it's become more common, you don't hear that phrase much anymore. But really, it is a miracle. Sort of the culmination of thousands of years of human civilization and intelligence and desire to overcome limitations such as being earthbound. And so humanity has invented air travel and it is incredibly sophisticated. I don't know the statistics. 10,000 flights a day all over the world from city to city 100 miles, 1,000 miles, 3,000 miles. Just a machine that starts off on the ground intentionally points its nose towards the sky and flies. It's really kind of amazing. And most people have been on airplanes and there are certainly understandable reasons or a little bit of anxiety. Remember that everyone gets that little clutch in their stomach when the airline starts to roll and actually has the temerity to defy gravity. So it's natural, a natural reaction to an unnatural act. And most people aren't aware of the engineering and science involved, so they don't understand why the wings seem to be moving. And should they be doing that? Well, of course they should. They have to be flexible enough to work with the air. That's the trick of flight. It's not really fighting the air, it's using aerodynamics to escape the Earth and achieve altitude. And there is tons of things you can read about the science of flight and modern air travel and the airline industry that will calm your nerves, mostly about the safety and science involved. Think about air travel is that it is so spectacular. Such a daily reminder of the awesome things we can do that when something does go wrong, it is 
sensationalized. It really makes for a good picture. And so these pictures are transmitted and spoken about in breathless terms over and over. But the thing about sensationalization is it's really not a statistic. It's just a story. It's one story out of 10,000 that happen every day. And it's a funny thing about our attention. A fundamental function of the human brain is to pay attention to the unordinary, potentially dangerous or threatening thing, and so we are attracted to the sensational. And it is a funny thing about attention and focus. I'll tell you a story. Several years ago, I actually worked as a transportation reporter, mostly covering automotive transportation. And of course, a big field of study are traffic collisions. And of course, I was drawn to these kind of statistics and I learned about another marvelous invention that doesn't get a lot of attention called the seatbelt. The seatbelt is the most important safety innovation ever devised in automobiles. Tens of thousands of lives have been saved through the use of seatbelts. And every year, the majority of people who are injured in vehicle collisions are those who are not wearing seatbelts. And so, for a while, I became very vigilant about everyone in my vehicle wearing their seatbelt. That was actually reasonable based on the information. And the thing about real airline statistics is that mishaps are incredibly rare even compared to vehicle incidents, they just don't happen. With the exception of the sensational events, which only happen a few times a year, and yet do get burned into our attention. This is a misrepresentation of reality. It's not a statistic. It's an anomaly. And one thing that I've been successful in using in overcoming different kind of concerns that I've had is I always ask myself are other people doing this? Are other people getting the kind of results that I'm after in a certain situation? Whether it be career or socially or in terms of physical fitness I'm focused on my fear, 
I'm looking for things that prove my fear to be correct. Which are easy to find if you're looking for them. But if you're looking for the solution, that's also easier to find and, as you might expect, much more common. You might want to go to an airport and look at all the happy, smiling people coming out of the departure area. Even if you just drive through the airport and look at all the happy reunions and the people with the huge smiles at seeing their loved ones again and the hugs and handshakes and kisses that occur when people return or in many cases are seeing someone they haven't seen for so many years and just the joy in that moment because somebody got on an airplane to see a relative or a friend who lived several hundred or several thousand miles away and you can, you can feel that emotion when you see it. We're not looking at it right now, and we know what it's like, and we can get that rush of just pure human joy at that sort of meeting and reunion that takes place tens of thousands of times every single day because somebody got on an airplane. And there are little tricks. You can practice deep breathing before you go on your trip. Breathing really does help. It's only after you've been afraid of something or nervous that you realize how shallow your breathing was. And when you do something you're comfortable with, how easy and natural your breathing is. And there's another thing about the science of fear. Scientists have been able to demonstrate that something happens in the brain when we feel that kind of anxiety. And with modern fear, the thing that is completely within our control is what happens before those events take place in the brain and that specifically is what we're doing right now which is telling a story. We tell ourselves a story every time before we do something we find to be easy. We just take out the trash. That's easy got to be done, we just do it. If something's fun, we tell ourselves a bigger story. I can't wait to go see this movie or play golf on the weekend. That's a story. And so, even before you put your golf clubs in the car, you're smiling because you're telling yourself that story about how much fun you're going to have playing golf, seeing your friends, being outside, all the things that make that fun. That's a big story. And we tell ourselves stories about the things we've become accustomed 
to being afraid about. What's really interesting is the story we tell ourselves about ourselves. Something like, I'm not the kind of person that can do that. Which is a fascinating concept. Because you're not even talking about the thing itself anymore, you're talking about yourself in relation to the thing. So someone could say, I'm not the kind of person who does well at that kind of thing. They've completely stopped trying to be good at that kind of thing. And yet at the same time, there's several stories we all tell ourselves about things that we couldn't used to do, that we now can do. And we tell ourselves that story about ourselves, not even about the thing. I used to not be able to ski. What the person isn't saying is, I can ski. Or whatever it is that you can now do that you used to couldn't do. Just a story. Right now you could be telling yourself a story and you're listening to someone telling a story about someone who overcame a fear of flying. And that person could be you. So you're listening to a story about a story about a person who's telling themselves a story about overcoming a fear of flying. And that's one way to get closer. Because there's already plenty of things you can do for which you tell no story. And this story is one of those things. You can listen to the internet. You don't even think about it. It's an app. So you might want to think about installing a flying on airplanes app in that wonderful computing device you've always carried with you. And you just get on that airplane. And it reminds me, going back to sensationalizing, the internet has done even more than air travel to connect people. We've already met thousands of people all over the world who listen to our programs. And it is such a delight. Uh, we may never need to meet in person. And yet this technology has connected us in a wonderful way. And yet, I've never seen a sensationalized story of fear of the internet. It just doesn't make for a good television picture. And it's just technology. And, quite frankly, it is a technology that has already delivered some harm. And yet you and I aren't engaged in that kind of thing right now. We're just communicating and helping each other. So technology clearly is neutral. In the case of the internet, again, we don't know of any horrible 
incidents where people get upset about using it, they just use it. And it's brought people together, people like us. So with air travel, it's a technology and a means to connect human beings that's existed for over a hundred years. And we use it, it's quite commonplace. And the science and the real statistics are clearly on the side of safety and even enjoyment. It is quite awesome to look down on the earth from an airplane window. It's just so beautiful, so peaceful, and it's such a privilege to be in that position of traveling at that speed with such ease. And I've always used that kind of altitude to think about my life and the people I love, the plans I have, and I love that perspective that that altitude brings. And when I get off the airplane and my love is waiting for me, it really is hugs all around and almost wet eyes, the embrace and just the happiness of being home or seeing someone you haven't seen in a while. And I know that you can experience that. It's really part of the drama of human life. And I'm glad that we are having this time together so you can have that time for yourself and your loved ones and your business and to experience different locales. You can always tell someone who came back from a sunny climate with their tropical shirt and a curiously wide smile that sunshine brings. And so, now that we've told ourselves this story of stories, it's clear that you can continue telling yourself other stories about how easy it is to travel by airplane, getting to and from safely, and putting any unnatural concern to rest so that you can get on with it and do the things you want to do when you want to do them. And I look forward to hearing about where you've been and how much fun you had traveling by airplane.